actually. You're seeing BBL looking like they want to get really aggressive on the pistol. And this looks like a walk down mid off the back of fault line flash, pressure towards headshot box. Yeah, I mean, you can see it now being applied. Kushin is not wasting any time. All that util being used, but he is spotted out. Flash still enabled, forced out as well, just from that one fault line. And so, early little test of how good DRX's default is. BBL come away unscathed, but without a kill of their own. I love how active Kushner is being as well. He's already pushed in mid. He was spotted in just a moment, a blink of an eye. Already updrafted onto that high ground angle, but a bit of a reposition now as the players are just rotating around. This crossfire setup that they've got going on in Garage could be quite difficult to break, but see what utility ends up being committed. Wow, it's so tense, this battle for Garage currently. Smoke goes in and Brave will realize. Dash enabled off to the side and it cuts up the crosshair placement enough. Whoa, that was Incredibly sticky. labored, yeah. Really, really difficult for them. A TP into the back of the site and a bit of run and gun on top. But it does leave it just down to Aslan. And that is a gutting way for BBL to begin because so much of how they won on Ascent was powered by winning the pistol round, right? They won pistol follow up on, on round one and on round 13. And more so than just that, the Brave and Turco duo on Ascent was fantastic. And they're the duo that just fumbled a little bit there in terms of the garage hold. But it was a hard one to deal with. So that's the pistol round going the way of DRX. And it sets them off on completely different footing compared to the previous map. Yeah. So it's going to be a very, very different task ahead of them, honestly. The fact that they were able to get those easy rounds in the pistol round set them up quite nicely. Gave them the buffer that they needed at least. But now it's... DRX are in the driving seat. Suchny calling for his team for a gamble stack over towards C. I wonder if they're going to push or do something funky. Maybe just sit here quietly. So they are holding the fault line. Yeah, take a look at their positioning now. All yeah. five players from BBL around here. But there's a recon derby in primed. I mean, it does look like there's something set here for BBL. Possibly just off the orb. Yeah, orb being tapped. There it, it is. is. Nice little swing and face, pushed up. Mako's on the corner, but traded out. The question is, can he reclaim this weapon? It's being guarded ever so slightly. But it's getting the backup and help of the rest of his team now, so. Fortunately, no prizes to be gained by BBL. It was a cute idea, though. It was. It was a nice idea, a little set play to make your eco round have a bit more of a sting to it. I think DRX are going to be able to just come away with this one fairly easily. A commitment into C doesn't have Brave or Sushni in a position where they can do too much damage. Unless Brave is able to wrap really fast, but the, the oh. flank should be watched. Yeah, Lambot's there, in fact. It certainly is being watched. Yeah, even if it didn't catch the contact, so. It is cool, though, to see Sushni call rounds like this. When, when you are an inexperienced IGL stepping onto the stage for the first time, battling against a team that you really, you know, is more proven than you. Yeah. You don't want to admit that they're better than you, but you, you know that there's more evidence for that. They've got the experience, they've been deeper in tournaments. Yeah, but when IGLs tend to be in that position, it's pretty common to just freeze up, Yeah. to forget your own game plan, to not call anything aggressive. And I think what we've really seen on Ascent, we didn't see that on Pearl. They really did freeze up. But on Ascent, we started to see them get proactive, get Kushner into really aggressive positions, try some set strats out. It looks like they're trying to begin Haven on a similar foot. Yeah, a bit of an evolution, you know, adding the layers to the game plan. Without a doubt, no, I completely agree. I think Suchni's addition has been quite good to them because BBL always that team. They've got the individuals. Kushina, how long have we talked about it? You know, the Turkish jet, this guy's able to just make magic out of nothing. But when you get to these really high level end of tournament matches, when you're up against the best in the world, let's face it, Listen, DRX, one of the favorites to you know, potentially win the whole of lock-in. Might have to address that expectation as yeah. we get later on in Haven. Not even guaranteed to make the next round. Not just yet. Oh, this is aggressive from Turco and Brave. That duo again. It's a double peak, Mako. Just holding the corner. TP's the safety. And that smoke just puts a dampener on anything that they were attempting to try and get aggressive. It really is so aggro. From an Astro and a Breach. Oh, 
That's just a bait as well. A close jiggle, Buzz takes the fight as well, just swinging at a slightly wider angle. The sight is theirs for the taking. But this is going to be a very tough retake. BBL are anticipating winning this round, but no recon dart. Turco's got to provide all of the utilities. Whoa! This is absolute chaos now, but he's dropped himself down, is dealt with. Would, no one else on his team was ready to go, though. Yeah, I felt like it was odd that he was just holding in that position, but... Was okay. that a misclick? Did he fall out of the window rather than deliberately go for it? I, I, I don't know whether he tried to find a timing or what there. Caught unaware, I suppose, by the smoke fading, but I, I did think it was a bit unusual that he was holding in there. Brutal. Brutal start to the map from BBL, the exact opposite of what they were hoping for. Yeah. And what they had, able, had been able to achieve. There's that little... You know, I mean, that's just great. Really. Yeah, bait yeah. and switch, basically. Yeah. That Sochini falls for. Most of the time, when you grab a bit of information there, you just need to leave instantly. Now drop down to those weaker weapons. Nothing quite so much as a stack like BBL were trying on their last eco, but... Holding with a nice little crossfire. Dash up, close and personal, straight through, and a bit of a disengage, just trying to catch the sightline onto Aslan there, just weaving in and out, back and forth. Plant's gonna go down without too many issues, especially as the smoke start to dissipate. And DRX have just gone for such a simple approach to this round, keeping it safe, yeah. and showcasing one of their CE execs. Prime game in Flawless. Now here's the question, can BBL pick themselves up and come out with a response? All of their aggressive movements in the early round have failed. If you look at what was working for them on Ascent, their early round game was, was really powerful. They were up plus six in first kills to first deaths on Ascent yeah. against DRX. And a lot of that, like you said, Bren, was how aggressive and proactive Kushina was playing. He was involved in 43 du uh, 44 duels on that <laughs> That's map. ridiculous. That is actually absurd. That's almost two around. Yeah. He's more than a spearhead at that point. He's the entire bloody weapon, but... Now we see them with guns in their hands. So BBL, that's an opportunity. But again, look at this pace that's being injected into it. DRX, not wasting any time. The back of the sides. Oh. Needs to be a one fight for Aslan, but he just does not catch it. It's a great read from Aslan as well. Oh, oh no. And it's fallen to pieces. Just a bit of a miracle play from Brave as he does. And it's just beamed down. Two players lined up for them. But will anything else be offered for them? Has brought them into this 2v2. Now the aftershock. Lovely angle that's been forced and collecting themselves. Just for the moment, now to defuse. Being stuck half on it already. It's up to RB to see if he can deny. One after the other. There's no shot in hell. Oh, that is a heartbreaker for BBL. The round started so terribly for them, and yet through sheer heroics coming out from Brave and then socially on the site as well, they had actually got themselves into a winning position until RB drove a dagger into their backs. Yeah, oh, I mean, how many times have we seen RB playing Killjoy on this map coming out with something ridiculous? <laughs> the Red Bull Clutch, I mean, just one of many. Yeah. Me speechless. He's eight and zero. Yeah. Just insanity. Heartbreaking for BBL. Really and momentum. Bring that one from the. Completely momentum stopping, too. Yeah. And what's their answer? I mean, that was the round that they needed to win. The full investment of the money still dropped down to the, the lighter buy once more. They do have ults to work with, but the question is I mean, you don't really want to be investing them into a round like this unless it does seem feasible. Oh, and here we go, they hit a close drone, they know they can catch at least one of the players. In fact, the two players that were at the back of the site, stunned up. They're crawling, trying to escape, but Suchini will be the first one down. Putting some pressure on the DRX economy is now really important. They've just got far too much money. DRX are going to be able to buy for round upon round upon round. Oh, it's a stun play with the updraft, that's what they want to go for, Kushina. He's waiting for it. There's the fault line, and here's the double up draft, but no targets spotted. And a beautiful dart timing. Just Cest ready for it as well. Small piece of utility to push back any sort of approach that BBL might try and come up with. And crumbling to pieces. All the options. And the end result of that round is that only Zest needs to buy armor. <laughs> so clean.
so perfectly, unbelievably clean from DRX. The, the Prime Gaming Flawless doesn't even begin to cover it. It's an understatement. This is straight back to map one. I don't know if DRX got a stiff talking to or what in the back yeah. end, that, you know, between maps, but they've come out with a fire lit underneath them. I think a bit of a wake-up call as well. Listen, there's no team you can really underestimate in this event. Yeah, I mean, anybody can deliver an upset. I think with with the normal double elimination format, that becomes less true, but with this single elim stuff, 32 teams, man, it really does feel like any given Sunday sometimes. Sure. This is a different scenario for BBL. I mean, listen, they've been they've been on the brink before. You think about that first half on a center where it was 8-4. They managed to come back in that scenario. So they've definitely got you know, the fortitude to be able to at least bring it back. So drone coming out there from Zest, looking towards A, and that has actually pulled Kushina over to the right-hand part of the map which is rough. Where on earth is this one going? Yeah, that is an odd dart. Okay, show me this dart. Where does that land? Where does it land? Where is oh, that going? The All the way side. to the back of the site? He's bounced it off a tree. Yeah, and Zest can just hold the flank from that one as well. That is unusual. Can't say I've ever seen that one before. You should be watched for though. Now that lockdown, T-Rex placing it. The Hunter's Fury is used as an answer to it, but Rebirth eventually enough to break it. They did end up losing Brave in the process. This reflank timing is everything. Kushner trying to take an easy fight, but it won't be awarded to him. It won't be in the slightest. Seventh round on the board for DRX. That's going to be the buy. Broken once more for BBL. And another facet that was working so perfectly for BBL on Ascent is that they always had the read on where DRX were finishing. I'm not there in the comms with them, and frankly, if I was, I couldn't understand Turkish anyway. Uh, not that talented. No, uncultured and untalented, <laughs> actually. But what was working for them is that Sojni was able to get the read on where DRX were going every round, whether that was based on whether you know where Buzz was or the knife timings or whatever. But here on Haven, they are just sent scattering. Mm -hmm. That round, round seven is a great example there. One drone coming out from Zest towards A. Things were getting very hairy yeah it just takes time away once more brave and turco going for a push i think they've been spotted yeah but it's gonna be the smoke up close i think that's just to try and fight for a bit of that control that's it's brave's own smoke that he ended up popping off there but you got to remember maybe a little play to see if they could get anything with again the weaker by drop down to just the pistols and they're stacking the a site and that's not where it is you know, again, going off the Sova drone, Zest, Sova drones towards short, and that calls the four player stack to A. And it's just not the right read. It might be against quite a lot of other teams. Not against DRX, not today. Yeah, not too much trending towards that A lobby. Utility dumped in, last ditch effort there by Brave. Just paying for it with his life, obviously, just jumping into the smoke to see if he can get anything done, but plan once more. Drop down, playing those post plant positions. Lovely stun, but Buzz does offset it. Tries to play in the smoke there, gets his head taken off once more. Lovely pop flash play and clean up crossfire. And you're starting to see why in rounds like these and the ones before, why Stax is considered the grandfather of Breach. Yeah. Because everything is just exactly where he wants it. Pixel perfect, all of the utility followed up on too. Yinsu was talking about Ascend being the Turkish map. This is the map I most strongly associate with DRX. Yeah. It's not always their best map, but it was just their home territory, their style. It all just worked so well here. By the way, RB still hasn't died. Just if we want to keep That's, a running note of that. Yeah, okay. My God, how this feels instantly like map one again. All the wind taken out from BBL's sails. Left scrambling, looking for those options. That's shocky. There goes the alarm, the alarm bot. Zest has been in the lab. Yeah, there's Maybe just some time so on the bench much. has helped him just look up lineup videos and <laughs> stuff. Just been you know? cooking. Yeah. Just been cooking, hasn't he? A steep A lobby push from BBL. They are holding this in a couple of angles. 
And Suchny that looks like he's going to be the one who takes contact. And if this does go now towards a lobby, drone cleared. Drone. Yeah, it has to be broken. Does push us back. But T-Rex, they're going to be disciplined enough to realize that it could be a player. Looks like they are trying to go clear it. But no lot out That's being running. used. No utility. That's Kushina. Playing off of his teammate. In particular, really well. Zest was just staring at the ground like a Euro decoy. For some reason, Mako just trying to pick up the pieces. A TP all the way into the seaside. Oh, and he gets denied. Great play from Asla Machado. It's time enough in a round, though, with 20 seconds, but they know where the spike is going to be. Last known location, just in a lobby. There's only a few more places they really can go. But every avenue is cut off to them here. Yeah. They have, he broken? they have generational wealth to work with, though. So DRX can definitely commit to this one. Take these fights. Inside the smoke, a bit of spam just to try and break it up. RB, can he pull off the impossible once more? One found, but luckily the coverage is there. And finally, BBL. They get that round on the board. But their economy is still in shambles. Brave and Turco with only the 3,000 credits to their name, essentially. So DRX have still done damage to them. And that was RB's first death, though, so that's good. He's only 14 and 1. Fantastic play, though, from Kushner. Just on an individual level to lock down this area for such a length of time and set his team up for the win. But I don't think that's replicable. No, it really was decided, I think, of the fact that DRX wanted to go towards a lobby. Most of the time, they haven't really been putting that pressure on. And the Haven meta is kind of developing. Usually, you see teams, you know, they dump that util into it. Fault line, something else, push a player up deep so they have that information, just like you're seeing here. So Dart, so Kushina can get into this close angle. But usually off the back of this, you want to rotate players away, you know? I have the spike. It's a bit of a tell that they're not going to be dedicating anyone towards that area of the map. Both shock darts getting used to break the alarm bot, and for whatever reason, it didn't hit the one in garage. It looked good, but yeah. the lineup just didn't land. The L setup, they're not. I mean, here's the thing, they haven't been punished actually for this, despite that. I mean, they're still sticking with three players holding close in a lobby. Only yeah. now you're seeing Turco rotate, but DRX were expecting at least a player to be close. I mean, they have fantastic B retake ults, right? The yeah, reach ult is true. just amazing from Turco. The only problem is if they sneak through the A connector, where DRX are instead going for a C split. The smoke popped off here. Now, ultimate being used potentially to fight this. The lockdown has put a dampener on it. Do they still want to commit this now? Yeah, well, that's RB. Where did he find that one? All popped off to the side. The Astral Wall was laid down with a Cosmic Divide, but it does little to stop again. DRX just barreling their way through onto the site. Wow, so important that the lockdown was broken there. You could hear them communicating it. And this is now really tough. Kushin has got to deliver the goods. And timing is everything. There's a dart into the back. He knows where one of them is remaining. It's Mako still locking it down and down to Suchny. The attacking lockdown, he can't quite find it. There's no angle in sight for him to break that one. DRX claiming once more another, not letting it get out of their hands just yet. And that's an awesome mid-round decision from DRX. They decide to go through Garage, and they're met with a lockdown in their face. Aslan just immediately puts it down. Great idea, good counter from BBL. And you can see on the player POV of Stax, talking to the rest of his team, asking, can we break this? Can we break this? Should we commit with the breach shot? And he's getting fed information from the rest of his team, makes the call as the IGL to commit to it, lockdown broken, and they get in onto the site. Everything happens so quickly with these top level teams. <laughs> I love that. BBL using the Vision Strikers strat. <laughs> the flash and dash out into yeah. grass. If you can't beat them, join them. All that time ago when they were Really put on the map, I think, from plays like that. I'm seeing it. Fast take now towards A. I swarm at his feet, but Buzz again just disrespecting it. Glimmers and echoes of it. You can see attempts are there. There was an updraft from Kushner as well, but the players dropping still one after the other. Even a shorty just running at them. And what can Brave do? Tries to pick up a bit of an upgrade, but god damn these shock darts. Just not even given an inch. And it looks like Termi, the DRX head coach, gave them an absolute dressing down between yeah. these two maps and told them, unless you beat BBL 
even more emphatically than you did on Pearl, I'll send you home myself. <laughs> we putting you on a yearly flight and yeah. forfeit. Yeah. yeah. We'll just forfeit the rest of our game. This has been just an absolute battering. Oh, it's been brutal to watch. And I think from BBL's point of view, when you're, when you're faced with an opponent like this in a game like this, you can't even be that mad. No. You're like, okay, we just got comprehensively, unbelievably outplayed. And hell, at least we got a map off them. The comfort zone for them. Trying to play inside. The Cloud Burst Brave. He survives for now, but not much longer. The Hunter's Fury is used to just try and clear the oh, way. No way. Two kills. Also get Aslan. There's no way. Such an this is the desperation. Final round, might as well use him. The ultimate's one after the other. Doesn't get too much done. The Aftershock pushing into the corner, into the angle. And on the flank, you should not just get the one kill, but down to that 2v3. Last player standing. How can they make this happen? 45 seconds left and just spraying it down. A bit of panic in the play. The level one will be that half score line. That is a really difficult one to come back from. Yeah. That I is would say tough. So. And I think a lot of people will have been doubting DRX's, you know, as one of the favorites of the tournament after they lost the set. But when Map 1 and Map 3 are like this, they just look in such insanely good form. Yeah, just an instant answer back. RB still only died once. <laughs> and there's just so many layers to what they were doing on their attack side. With the side swapping around, that is going to be the first half done. Let's find out what the desk has to say. Well, I, I, when they got that first, <laughs> that first sums it up quite nicely because uh, it's going to take uh, honestly perfect gameplay from BBL to be able to mount any sort of comeback. They have one round as a buffer. Yeah. Not wasting too much time. That's a Nana Swarm drop down. What an opening. Okay. Kushina really fighting hard for that one, just running his way right down. And now to squeeze that one player that was Mako. Holding into short, cleaned up momentarily. Faster play to still. Stax tries to drop down to catch a cheeky timing, but there's the pistol round one at least. And I think I have slightly a different perspective to Seth on the desk, where I don't really think BBA need that many more rounds to feel happy about what they've accomplished. Their pistol rounds have looked good. Yeah. They've actually been able to win a bunch of those. And they've taken a map away one from one of the favorites of the tournament too. It is just gonna be so, unbelievably impossible for them to win this map and claw their way back from a deficit like this. Yeah. But I think they can just soak it in, enjoy being here. Taking the experience of it, that's for certain. You are right, Josh, you know, a certain level of pride, I think, for them being able to go toe to toe with a team like DRX on Ascent, the fact that they were able to take that one away from them. There's a lot of pride involved in just being on your team for partnership, sure. right? Making yeah. it to that 1% of the Valorant pros that are representing their team, their region, etc. For BBL, their country too, at that top level. We'll see just really trajectory, I think, of a team like BBL. Now getting deeper into what's left of the series and yeah, potentially on the other side of this tournament. Yeah, I think a lot of people were completely counting them out. And that's not what's happened today. No. Showcase that they have a lot to play for still. That's a lot of utility being used, but nothing to clear into short. <laughs> Z Zest has just slipped his way into short. They gotta know this isn't cleared, right? Yes. Yeah. But also, I don't think you really expect the Sova to be tucked. Sun is watching just that one extremity. I don't think Zest is going to be able to win the 1v5 with the Classic, though. Yeah, seems unlikely. <laughs> He's making it look like a bit more than a Classic. <laughs> he gave it a good try, didn't he? He really did, yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, me BBL with a bonus. Me. BBL with another five rounds after that. And then, then, we'll, then, then we can then start talking. Then you're talking about it? Then okay. we can start talking. Okay. Yeah, at this point, it's still uh, far too early days, I think. Yeah. Just not enough room for error when it comes to it. It literally has to be perfect from here on out. I think this is a good time, though, to showcase what you've got on the world stage, right? Yeah. I think a good opportunity to show people that they shouldn't count you out for future tournaments, for EMEA, VCT, you know, that kind of stuff. I think the evolution of this team as well, you know, BBL, 
in the past have been, you know, the descriptive term that I've used has been quite one dimensional, I think, in the way that they thought about the game, the way that they played the game with overall game plans. But the addition of Tsuchini as an IGL, I think, I already see it paying dividends with that Ascent map. Yeah, it's a promising start, isn't it? Yeah. They've definitely got things that they can come away being happy about. So moving their way forwards here, just a little bit of poking and prodding towards Garage. As DRX have still managed to hold on to that spot, RB's turret not getting broken. Seems like that would have been a major win for BBL's macro game. But heading back, pushing Buzz away from the angle. Buzz, though, not calling for any reinforcements just yet. And that, that is going to throw BBL off, because you would definitely assume that Zest or Stax would have rotated today. And actually, now they do. It's just a little later. But here's where you see Zochni actually, you know, helping them come up with good game plans, because yeah. they're reading that move, knowing that there's going to be more players over towards A, and hitting the weak side of the map. Well, here we go. Hit coming through, dart into the back. Dash forwards, but not enough spam damage. And look at the absolute mountain of utility. Mako is so uncomfortable, but Arby returning fire. And lift down to Aslan. Position is not quite known just yet, but it looks like Mako is relatively aware. And that is going to be the 12th round gained. No more room for error at all for BBL. It's going to be that match point, that series point for DRX. And if DRX's goal was to make it, just as dominant as Pearl. They would have to convert in this one coming up right now. 13-3. Let's see what they got for us. I think a lot of people are going to be watching DRX and feeling really good about the way that they've performed here on Pearl and Haven, assuming that they can close out the map fairly quickly here. So a bit of a lobby control from Buzz from Zest, oh, really this. pushed up. This is dangerous. Very dangerous, only the one for one. On defense side, it's not the most ideal outcome. We've seen Crashies go for a overall from this position that got so much value, but Zest decides to play it a little more slowly. He's getting himself into some really tricky positions over a short. Not the best spot for a over to play. Yeah, a lot of they it are unexpected. Of Mako smokes, honestly, have been doing the most as well. Just an extra layer in play, making sure that they can't quite clear it. But there we go. Now the presence is met pound for pound. RB just trying to push them back. Not able to do so. Spike is going to go down now, and it is just left up to Mako, who's going to opt to the save. And BBL plays. still with life in them. Yeah. Making this one a closer game than Pearl. DRX are going to have to take another eco here and still figure things out. I don't know how far Buzz is along to his ultimate, actually. He might be able to scramble a buy together. Yeah, might be able to go for to. something weird, but I don't see really why you would. It doesn't make sense to take risks and let BBL back into the game. Yeah. But that was off the back of breaking Buzz's really extended position. And then Zest also choosing to take a really odd position, in my opinion. There's a Sova pushing close there up on short. You're not able to get value out of any of your utility when the site hit comes through. And he didn't really have a teammate to play off either. Yeah. I feel like the composition as well that DRX are playing is, I mean, it's particularly good for retakes. You have great tools, the paranoia, the dart, all the breach utility as well to clear out hell. If you do want to play retake on A, it's, it's more than viable. When you play in short like that, any good team is going to be cleared you out. Definitely true. We'll see if they adjust their game plan though. Singular rifle from Mako, who saved it in the previous round. And this is where BBL should be able to convert. I've seen so many situations like this, though, Bren, where teams need to get a comeback, and it all falls to pieces on a thrifty. It's these rounds that are the dangerous ones. They, yeah. You should be thinking, you know, percentage-wise, should be favored. Mako with the rifles, the one taking contact. That is an incredibly wide angle to be taken <laughs> with a shorty, son. Not getting into the montage of that one. No, that one's, that one's not touching it. <laughs> Adobe Premiere. <laughs> 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 uh. All well and good, though. Flick of the wrist from Stax. And it's not going to be this thrifty round. Yeah. Not now, not today, says BBL. Getting a fifth on the board. And making their attack side look fairly decent. They look coordinated. They have game plans. They've kept it fairly simple, too, I would say, in round 16. 
round 17, just flushing out A. That's where most of the fighting is happening right now, around that A lobby area. But maybe BBL will have a different idea with the alts on board. Breach ult is also really good towards A, though. Yeah, it is. Right here. I'll find them. Quite fantastic, but... Oh, a little dash down short play, this looks like. This recon dart lands at the top of short. So, is there going to be a punish here onto Buzz? Doesn't look like it, actually. No, he's out of the line of sight of it, so he's not going to get revealed. And he didn't get contested by Kushner. Normally, teams will sync that up with a jet dash or something like that to put early pressure down short. I think he's got them contained, though, hasn't he? Oh. Okay, Kushner's just trying to dash a punish. And that's a stun up just to try and bail out Zest to claim the kill. Brave does make it even, though. It's a good punish, and Suchin is leaving, leading the team all the way over to C instantly. That's Look at that. Call. Great read. Yeah. Great read. Great call. Haven's just got so many opportunities for IGLs to show their worth, right? You see people like FNS, for example. It's like a playground for him. Yeah. I was associated getting a, with that. You're getting a little flavor of this here, too. Oh, Mako has got himself into a wild spot, though. And RB pays for it. Yeah, I mean, TPing into the smoke caused him to spam it. It was RB, like you said, paying for that. Unfortunate indeed, but that lockdown pushing him back. Brave just skirting the outside of it. Aslan is going to be detained, but the spike is dropped down. Now, just how dangerous does this get with Mako low and the money also low? Looks like DRX are opting again into that percentage play. Yeah, and BBL have all the alts to stop this. There's literally a 0% chance that Zest and Mako could win this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you know, you've got a reflank coming out from Brave, which they were aware of, but also the Soverall, Breach Alt that can stop you. And at that point, if DRX chose to commit, it would just be to pull out Sochni and Turco's ults. And instead, I think the better option is to just keep the Vandals alive. It adds so much more danger to your eco rounds. What a difference gonna, this half has been. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, Brent. We're kind of getting to the point where... Close. What did you say? Was it eight rounds? I said they had to win, what was it, round 15 and five more, something like that. Which I think would have brought it up to... Round eight in total, so seven or eight. Never do maths on broadcast, because uh, you will look like an idiot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was around that number, you know, like. Yeah, it would have brought it up to nine, but that's fine. It would, I mean, eight is nearly nine. It was a rounding error from me, sorry. Right, right, yeah. Operator on the board here for DRX. That Zest is using This the is so team. bizarre. What okay. is going on here? Yep. And these are the rounds you need to be careful of. Despite the buy being a bit weak, I think it's because Buzz ends up having his ult to play with. The Blade Storm. Hunter's Fury is beautiful. Does trade it out. But it's still a bit of a weird one. Any sort of mistake. And you never know with these kind of rounds. Your series, your tournament life just could be over in the blink of an eye. But BBL offered... Nice uncontested plan. Buzz with the knife, still looking to contest, and then you see that Turkish confidence coming through once more with the gunplay. Unwavering faith in their teammates, able to just solidly clean up the rem uh, remaining members there of DRX. Yeah, and despite the fact that DRX had some dangerous weaponry, the operator, Buzz with his knives, you know, it was still a half buy, but it had a lot of power behind it. Uh, BBL is still really clean. Yes. And I'm not going to lie, Brent, if BBL win this next round, I think I think the the squeeze is going to start to be felt by DRX. A fine day. Certainly feels like it. Because this is silly getting out of control. I think BBL, listen, I'm not going to say the usual, which is like, oh, what resilience they've shown to come back in this situation. We've already seen it over the course of the series. Yeah, definitely. They've been able to come back from admittedly not, not as much of a deficit as this first half was. But DRX, in just a blink of an eye, it all comes down to this. He finds the one target. Little smoke drop down, consumes it to give him the sightline angle, but Buzz will be the finisher. And it was a valiant effort from BBL, make no mistake about that. But DRX were in control of this series.